what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Okay. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, host and founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders, and today is no other. I'm going to introduce Ian Garlic in a second, but before I do, Ian, I always like to point out other episodes people should check out on the podcast. And, you know, I actually released an episode with Vern Harnish lately. It's actually a really good one. He had a new book that, that came out, um, obviously, has some uh, books previously scaling up and, and some others. So check that out. I had uh, did a podcast with John Corcoran, my business partner. We talk about, we, we sometimes do what are frequently asked questions. And this one was, I don't have time to start a podcast. And we talked about the 10 reasons how podcasting will actually save you time. Um, and I, and you know this because you have a podcast as well. And Ian, um, thanks for joining me. I know Ian is the founder of Garlic Marketing. He also has a podcast, an amazing podcast, The Garlic Marketing Show and True Law Stories. And um, if you are looking for someone, which you should be, that you can hand off your best client and you get this amazing uh, case story video that you can deploy uh, over and over again, because people always ask, hey, can I hear from other people that you've worked with? Well, you don't have to interrupt their day and go, yeah, let me introduce you. You have these videos that are already ready that you could send. We use Ian and his team. They're awesome. Basically, it's just a short introduction. Hey, take uh, 15 minutes with our team to chat about your, your favorite things about that company, and they take care of everything else. Ian, what did I miss? I mean, videocastory.com. Yeah, I mean, we do the strategy, the goals behind your video case stories, which I think we're going to talk about today. Um, but yeah, it's what we do. We, we also can help with other types of videos. Once you get those done, uh, your about us videos, uh, your FAQ videos, like Jeremy said, a whole list of videos. We create that whole strategy for you. So, you know, we're talking because the great thing about podcasts is whatever I am working on personally or business wise, I could have some of the, the top people I trust to talk about it. And, you know, we're approaching the the new year and I and I were discussing goals. And I always am curious how high level people set goals, what they do to plan their goals. And so I want Ian to come on and talk about um, goal setting a little bit. And so I, I don't know if you want to start off the about the different areas that you think about or look at when it comes to goal setting? Sure. I mean, I try and think about like throughout my entire life, like what do I want spiritually, financially, family, you know, marital, um, uh, of course, I mean, then there's business, but then, you know, health wise, of course, fun wise, what do I want to do? What do I want to learn? What do I want to experience? Uh, plan it out. And, you know, I'm one of those people that I just very, you know, I'm not a planner. I'm not that person that does that, but I firmly believe in setting those goals, thinking about getting some intention down. And then business wise, obviously, you know, we do top down uh, planning. So we go, hey, this is what our numbers are. And then we look at what our current numbers are and go, what do we want to sell? How much do we want to sell of this? Um, who do we want to work with? Who do we want to target? What new, um, what do we, what are we going to need to do to get there? What new, um, you know, what new things are we going to need to do over the next year to get that done? Um, I'm doing this right now. I do, I try and do it twice a year. This is not as intense a one as middle of the summer. I try and get really intense into it middle of summer because I feel it's a better time to be doing goal planning for business and personally, because it's, it's quieter. Right. We think of the holidays now as holidays. And I think that term is we're you know, we're, we're recording this right after Thanksgiving. The word holiday is not appropriate for the holidays because it's definitely not a quiet time in most of our lives, is it? <laughs> yeah. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year. I mean, it all kind of just is a couple months span where people are are busy, very busy. Right. And, and everything's kind of chaotic. And I think so when you sit down in the summer or now, mm -hmm. what do you do? 
I think about, you know, long-term where I want to be. I, I think about the past year, what worked, what didn't, what goals that I have that I didn't achieve, what goals that I achieve, what changed. And one thing, big things I'm always asking myself is, you know, is this really what I want, right? Is this really me? Is this I am? Because I think there's a lot of us that are putting goals that are based on what other people, other people, you know, like, hey, I want to make X amount of dollars. I hear that all the time. You know, I want to 10X our revenue. I'm like, why? All right. Why do you want to 10X your revenue? I mean, that's fine if that's your goal. If that's really what you want. But um, I think that's one of the big things I do is I think through it, think what worked and what didn't. Um, after I do that, you know, I start to list out, you know, uh, achievement goals and process goals. So, I, well, I, I think it's great to have, like, I want to be doing this or I want to, you know, lose 50 pounds or I want to make X amount of dollars. Those are achievement goals and you're not happy until you get them. What's one thing I've learned, um, especially if you're like type A, you're like, I, you know, I want to get there. And, you know, if you don't get them, you, you know, it's, it's easy to drop off. So then I think of process goals, meaning what do I need to do on a daily basis to make myself move towards these things and, you know, happy. Um, and I really think of those, like those process goals. I, I need, I want to meditate every day, right? Or I want to write every day. I love to write. I think it helps everyone out. Everyone should be writing every day, um, journaling every day, um, you know, practicing. I like my ukulele, you can see the ukulele back there. Uh, so practicing ukulele, you know, spending time with, you know, spending meaningful time with my son uh, and with my wife and getting out on the boat. And what do I need to do to make sure those things happen? Um, and once I get those process goals done, I think of, you know, small, medium and large. So what's the, the minimal amount that would count and what's the top level that I want to get? Because you can't, I, I, that's another thing. And after that, it's like, what's going to stand in my way of these? Because what I found with goal setting, it's great. But like, if you just set goals and you don't think about how you're going to get there, well, it, it, it that's why most new new year's resolutions fail right and also if you set these goals like hey i, I i'm not running right now but i'm gonna run three miles a day you go from zero to three miles a day you might be able to do it most likely you're gonna get injured and what do you do when you get injured <laughs> and, i mean i get injured all the time so for me thinking about lifting weights every day well that's fine but you know if i'm like i'm gonna do two hours of weightlifting every day it's i'm gonna get injured and then I'm going to be depressed because I'm not lifting two hours a day. So thinking of that small process goal, what's the minimum? Like for me, for a long time, it was before COVID, it was just walking the gym every day. Um, I got that from Glenn Dawson, right? And, and I don't know if you met him, but he's great, you know, over at Reset U. And, um, you know, he said, just walk in the gym. And that, that's an easy goal. But when, guess what happens when you walk in the gym? You start to do other stuff. Same thing with writing. I'm just like, hey, write for just write anything for five minutes because some people do like a 500 word a day goal. And if you don't hit it, you're like, Ugh. but there's some days I'm like, I write 2000 words. And then there's some days I write 10, but I'm writing and you set yourself up for success. And, um, and then I, what I'm starting to do is really look at those roadblocks and how to, that's my, my new thing this year is really looking at the things that could get in the way. And what am I going to do when those things get in the way? Cause that's what, you know, people don't think about that. And I think that's where the failure of almost every program is, is they don't think about the psychology of the program and the rea reality of the program. They're like, well, we're going to make you, you know, this Facebook ads course is going to make you a million dollars. But I'm like, what happens when it stops working? Right. What happens when I don't have time for it? You got to be thinking through those things. You know, that it's interesting, like with video case story.com and collecting people's case stories, we, you know, you think it's a simple thing, but like one of our biggest things is what, what happens when the person disappears, when the client disappears on us, right? How are we going to handle that? How are we going to handle if the story isn't that good? How are we going to handle the, because bad things happen, right? Things that unexpected things happen. It's how are you going to handle it? Because that's the number one. I think that's the number one key to success with any type of goal is not planning it. It's, it's not setting the goal. It's thinking about what you're going to do and what are you going to do when things get in the way.
Sorry, I just talked a lot, but no, that's good. I want to I want to break some of that down as far as roadblocks and small goals, but but just more of a logistical thing. Um, how do you document it? Do you do this on a piece of paper? Do you just when you sit down and do this, where does it live? Evernote, Evernote, everything's in Evernote. I, I I've tried handwriting. My handwriting's horrible, and I lose paper. So you'll sit I, down with Evernote, and you will have these categories, and then under these categories, you may list different um, achievements that you want, and then you'll list different process or or daily habits that you want. Yep, yep, exactly. And then I'll break down the achievements into what do I need to do for those achievements, and get a little more streamlined and and. And I, what I'm, another thing I'm trying to do is I'm way too ambitious. Like I'm like, like personally this year, I wanted to coming up. I wanted to get better at ukulele. I want to learn piano. I want to start taking archery lessons. I want to play golf. I want to get really good at sailing. And like, that's great if I was a single guy who worked 20 hours a week, but then I look back and I'm like, I need to choose one of these things. Right. Plus I love so you'll kind cook. of brain dump all the stuff that you want and maybe circle one or two. Exactly. I'm like, what do I really, really want to do this year? Mm. And, and, and so, yeah, that's been one of my biggest problems in the past is too many goals. I want to hear some examples of the small goals um, mm -hmm. and then some examples of roadblocks. So, I mean, you could choose any of the categories. It could be, you know, health, fun, business. What are some examples of the small goals on a daily basis? I mean, for health, I mean, health is, I think, the simplest. And this is one of the ones that I think everyone can achieve and learn from is because, I mean, I would, I, I was worrying about today, <clears throat> uh, you know, I trained for ultra marathons and I ran ultra marathons and, and, you know, I, I went, there was a point in my life where if I ran seven miles a day, I felt bad about myself. Right. And then when I stopped that, it's really hard to start at back even, even one mile, like go from seven miles to one mile. And you're like, oh, I'm not doing anything. But for most people, if they ran two miles a day, it'd be a lot. But I'm like, seven miles a day wasn't enough. But now I'm like, no matter what, I have a, like a super easy goal. So right now for me, it's walk 10 minutes a day, right? That's my aerobic. And then absolute minimum, I do five minutes with the resistance bands. That's it, and like, I have a super easy resistance band and, you know, I, my goal is 10 minutes with a hard resistance band and burnout. And that's like the high big goal, but still not that huge. Right. And my goal for walking is 45 minutes to an hour a day. But I, if I don't get that in, I'm not gonna feel bad about myself because I know the little things done every day are what add up, right? The water dripping. I always imagine the water dripping, right? If you, if you crushed five gallons of water onto a cement block it wouldn't do much to it. But if you took and dripped that one drop over the course of a year onto that cement block, there's a good chance you're going to wear away at that block over the course of a year. Hmm. So those are some examples of small goals health wise. Um, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear, you know, fun or learning or business or family. One of the things that I started doing recently is, uh, Chad Rubin told me about this app called the way of life. And it's like, I think $6 lifetime. And it's basically just a checklist. And mm -hmm. you put, I put down some of the things I want to do daily. And that's like a yes or no. Did you do it or not? And it kind of trend, you could see the trends over time, but it kind of holds me accountable each day to just click a button. To say, Did I do this today or not? And like you said, I like what you said about just a really something that's simple because someone looked at my goal, you know, for a health one would be do like 20 push-ups. Well, mm -hmm. you know, can I do more than that? Is that a lofty goal for me? No, it's not. But I know if I'm doing, going down there to do like two sets of 10, I probably will do more than that. Right. It's like kind of Glenn's walk in the gym. Just don't make it. So it's going to kill you. And, um, and again, people are going to vary with their opinions on this. Right. But, uh, Mine is, is kind of similar, like, great. Um, just get it small so that I can actually do it. Um, yeah. So what are some of the other ones that you have? Um, I always love hearing because it sparks what maybe I should be doing or I should be thinking about that I'm not. Let me see here. Goal -wise. So we talked a little bit the health ones. Um, 
And what about, I don't know, a business one or a fun one? I mean, business wise, um, I mean, business for us, you know, we're looking to develop, we have a, a partnership. We're looking to develop partners, other agency partners. So we have a, a, a partnership goal, right? We, we also have, I, I definitely want to get out a hundred podcast episodes next year. So that, that's a, a goal for me. Um, and I want to do one 90 day sprints of YouTube videos. So that's, an, those are all process goals, right? I'm not looking at subscribers. I, I, I've, that's some, a dangerous thing. If it's not direct, you know, cause it's you really can't tough. control it. You can't, well, not like I mean, control. unless you have a lot of paid traffic, but yeah. But you can, you can control the number of subscribers, but is that subscriber going to lead to my other business goal? Right. I was reading, um, where, where was, oh, I think I was reading the new, like the, what's his, uh, the, I forget his name from a strategic coach, Dan Sullivan and uh, mm-hmm. Benjamin Hardy's book. And they talked, they had a good story about, um, is the, about the crew team, the British crew team, I forget what year, but basically they switched their, the, their question at everything that they did. Is this going to help me us row faster? Is this going to help the boat go faster? Every single thing. And it's a great, you know, and, and that's what I try and put my goals around. Um, yeah. So you yeah, getting but, a YouTube subscriber won't necessarily lead to your goals necessarily. It won't. it won't um so you know content wise i definitely have some uh, ranking goals for video case story i want to rank and, and really rank for some key terms there um number of case, you know we we want to be doing at least 10 new clients a month for video case story.com so that's a lot of clients we're going to onboard um and yeah and then we we are creating a new, um, I have a new package to work directly with me that I, I want to work with six people next year. And so we have that set up and so, you know, it's a six figure package, but it, it's, it's an intense two days of video shooting and getting a ton of video content done. And then on the fun or family side, but I like what you said there, because, you know, when it's in your control, that's key. So it's like, well, you know, if you look at, you know, clients, right? It, it It's not in your control if a client no. says yes or no, but it is in your control. If you're like, I'm going to reach out to five partners a day to yep. do X, Y, Z, right? And that is in your control. We always talk about that lagging and forward in indicators, forward goals, right? Because like you said, you can have the lagging one, which is number of clients, dollars, dollar investment. The forward goal, you know, the the goal that you can achieve, the, the goal that you can activate is the things that you can actually do. And, you know, you want to make sure your goals are based around that. Um, fun goals. Uh, I mean, we're, we're going to Italy next year, which is going to be fun. Mm. I, w- I, I definitely want to be taking, I'm, I'm adjusting my work schedule because I get up so early and I, 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 I know you won't like this, but I, I don't want to work 12 hours a day every, every day. You get up at three or four in the morning. Yeah, I get up around four four thirty, um, but I want to you know start work about six and about two or three, and you know and I definitely want to do more writing. So I want to publish some fiction next year. So that's one of my goals too. But fun goals, you know, we've got that is you know I do one fun thing a week with my son. That's not on the screen because we do we tend to he likes video games a lot. So, um, which, yeah, incorporates in that, trying to figure out the fun stuff for me. Cause I, it gravitates. It's really tough for me to not make fun stuff into work. You know? <laughs> I'm like, I love going on the boat. So I'm going to invite all my business colleagues on the boat and it's going to become a business meeting. So, but I enjoy that. You combine them. I always combine. Them. So the fun may be going on my boat twice a week or something like that. Um, and then every day, every week, day, every, every day. <laughs> and then family wise, uh, any other goals, daily goals, weekly, monthly. I mean, we uh, family wise, uh, definitely at least date night twice a week. That's wife wise. Um, you know, I, I don't I haven't gotten really specific with 
I've got stuff, you know, we would work on Max's financial plan. And one of my big things this year is getting him start thinking about money and work different. Hmm. So that's one of my goals for this year How too. So? Well, because, you know, I mean, he's, he's eight, nine, but I want him to start realizing what work is and how to think about money. Cause I think hmm. that's something we just, kids are not educated. Well, my parents showed me how to work, but they didn't show us how, you know, how to control money, how to think about money and just go work harder and make more money. Hmm. What are you going to do? Do you know? So one of the know, things yeah. we we actually read the book "Opposite of Spoiled." I don't know if you've yeah. heard of it, but um, no, yeah, you recommended it. We implemented I... that based on the book, which is very simple. It's like um, there's a a give jar, a spend jar, a save jar, and there's one other jar. That I'm forgetting. There's four jars. Um, and whatever the allowance is weekly, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's like 50 cents or a dollar or, or a dollar for each jar. It doesn't matter. The point is the, the amount of money equal goes into all the jars. And then so, and, and people can check out the book. I'm not going to do it justice, but you know, you can, um, if they ask for something, you're in Target or something. Oh, I want this. Well, do you have enough in your, in your spend jar? So it becomes less of, I'm going to get this for you more of, well, then they have to make a decision. Well, do I want to spend, blow all my money on this toy uh, or, or not? And, and also the <laughs> give part is they choose um, like a charity, you know, the, the process of choosing a charity and because that's your give, you're not taking out of that gift for spend. So it's like, that's the gift. So you choose, so they chose each of the girls chose a charity and, you know, bought a, a coat for someone who doesn't have a coat this winter. That's I great. mean, obviously not in Florida, but you know, um, oh. but in Chicago. So there's stuff that they it, it kind of is the financial literacy, but also there's that the other aspects of um, having money also. So um, I know we're we're you know you have uh, another call in a bit, but just to could wrap things up here um, with roadblocks. Um, what are some of the thing examples of roadblocks that you have thought about? And again, it could be health, fun, business, um, just so people start thinking, because I, I like that you point out the roadblocks and goals. We're not even thinking of that. At least I'm not. Yeah. I mean, roadblocks, I mean, health is one, coming back to a simple one is, you know, what do I do when I'm traveling? Right. And I'm not, I don't feel like doing it or, you know, what, what do I do um, when I haven't planned out my meals? Right. And, and all that's available is junk food. Um, you know, what do I do when the, you know, our marketing campaign isn't working, right? What do I do when I don't feel like doing some of this stuff? Um, and those, you know, there's gonna be times when you don't feel like it with your marketing campaign. What do you do when that's not working? What, what's going to happen when your marketing is not working? Um, what's going to happen if I'm not, uh, you know, drinking, if I don't get the water I want every day, drink water every day. I'm just looking at my goals right now. Um, you know, what's going to happen if I don't uh, limit the amount I eat out per week? Because I love to eat out. But some, I mean, I'd love to eat out, but sometimes it's just like a default to eat out. Um, you know, what's going to stop me from regularly reviewing our financials? What, you know, and how am I going to be kept accountable? Those are all things that I, I, I make a list of what can stop me and what am I going to do in that case? Hmm. I love it. First of all, I want to thank everyone. Check out more episodes of Inspired Insider. Check out Rise 25. If you've thought about launching and running a podcast, it's more of like, how do you give to your relationships? How do you give to your and profile the companies and the relationships that you know and love? Um, I found no better way than having a podcast. So if you have questions, go to rise25.com. I, and where should we point people towards online to check out more? Yeah, go to videocasestory.com. You can get your video case story opportunity score. It's like low hanging fruit, 10 places you can use video case stories to you know, 10X your return on that investment. Um, if you want to connect with me, LinkedIn or YouTube, you can go to, uh, 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 dang, I can't remember, cruisetube.com. Uh, they could probably just Google your name. 
Yeah, you can I am my name garlic. and connect with me. Let me know you saw me on Jeremy's show. Um, if you connect with me on LinkedIn or something like that, let me know you saw, saw me on Jeremy's show. Because okay. if you're just like, hey, and you try and sell me something right away, I'm going to ignore it. Uh, exactly. But if there's anything I can help you with, genuinely help you with, besides buying something for me right away, let me know and I will try to do that. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. 